meiosis 2 or meiosis 2 what happened in the meiosis 2 well first of all the simple one chromosome numbers they are remain the same so one end to one end The same as this one here, one end to one end. Haploid to haploid, basically, because as I mentioned that, oh, meiosis 2 is basically uh, mitosis. And what do they separate? Yes, they separate the sister chromatid. And then the rest of it is pretty much the same, okay, uh, as mitosis. Um, but remember, at the beginning of meiosis 2, we have one mother cell, okay, one mother cell. This is a one mother cell. And then one mother cell will go through what meiosis one to become two daughter cell, and then each daughter cell will become two daughter cell. So total we have uh one two three four. We have four daughter cell. So the entire meiosis, because we have meiosis 1, meiosis 2. So meiosis, basically from one mother cell. You become four daughter cell. So that's another differences between mitosis and meiosis, okay? And guess what? And each daughter cell, they are different from each other. And not only they're different from each other, they're also different from the mother cell. How come each daughter cell, they're different from each other? Because of the uh, crossover recombination in prophase 1 nested with the independent assortment in metaphase 1. That makes each daughter cell different from each other and then they are also different from the mother cell. So what's the significance? So fertilization, meaning that the combining sperm and eggs together. So as you can tell that each sperm, they are different from each other. And then each egg, oh, they are also different from each other. So what happens is that when you combine one sperm with one egg, then of course they are different from, they will, the offspring, the baby will be very different from their parents. No baby that is identical to uh, either parent, okay? The genetic variability or genetic diversity is the advantage of sexual reproduction. Why? Because genetic variation increases the survival of the species. Let me give you an example. What does it mean increase survival? A lot of genes that we have in our body, they, um, um, they are, we con uh, a lot of so-called recessive genes. The recessive gene in our body, they are usually, not always, we will talk about this in the next lecture about genetics, it's usually but not always um, uh, carry disease. A lot of genes are carrying disease. So if you marry someone that is not your, well, close relative, someone that are totally different from you, 
then their gene will be very different from your gene. Then basically, um, the recessive gene or the disease-carrying allele, disease-carrying gene, they can be covered by the healthy gene. So that the disease-carrying gene will not be expressed, then you don't have the disease. In other words, marrying um, with close relative will increase the expression of those genetic disease. Uh, that will decrease the survival of the species. On the other hand, if, um, if you marry with someone that is totally different from you, for example, uh, the best way is to cross, cross racial, cross ethnic, cross racial marriage. And then the baby will be very healthy because the, the gene, they are totally different. So let's compare meiosis 1 with mitosis, okay? Meiosis 1, we have prophase 1, and then crossover occur, okay? Synapsis meaning that it is the homologous pair. It is the homologous chromosome pair up and then crossover occur. And then in mitosis, the, the homologous chromosome, they do not pair up. And there's, of course, there's no crossover, there's no recombination. So that's the differences between mitosis and meiosis 1. And then in metaphase 1, what happened? The homologous pair align, you have independent assortment occur. In metaphase, in mitosis, they align at the metaphase plate or the equatorial plate. Basically, it means that, okay, they in meiosis, in metaphase 1, the homologous pair, they align like this. It's like a double, double line, but here it's only a single line. In anaphase 1, okay, it is the homologous separate that means the homologous chromosome separate your paternal chromosome go become one cell and then your go to one cell and then your maternal chromosome go to another cell in anaphase it is the separation of sister chromatids okay so that's the very different uh, the first three phases of meiosis one and metaphase they are very different let's take a look at meiosis Continue. So for the telophase one, what happened? The daughter cell forms, okay. Telophase is also forming daughter cell. But as I said that what happened is that um, uh, this daughter cell they are one N. Okay, these daughter cell they are two N. Not only that, okay, this is a good point. Daughter cell, they are not genetically identical to the parent cell. Daughter cell, they are genetically identical to the parent cell. And of course, you can see that, okay, we have four daughter cell here. And we have two daughter cell here. So um, this is the summary table for uh, meiosis 1 compared to mitosis. Okay, I'm not going to talk about it again. I'm not going to repeat it. They didn't put a 1N, 2N. Okay, uh, 2N become 1N here. This is a 2N become 2N. What about meiosis 2 compared with mitosis? I always like to say oh, they are identical, but actually they're similar, not identical. So for prophase 2, there's no pairing. So it is the same as prophase in mitosis, no pairing. And then And then the chromosome, they also line up in the 
me uh, metaphase play is the same thing, but the difference is that um, um, it is haploid number, okay? Duplicated, what does it mean duplicated? Duplicated means that uh, uh, you have the two chromatids, two chromatids. Duplicate means two chromatids. And a sister chromatid separate, sister chromatid separate. So it's the same thing. And then at the end of pillow phase two, this is different. Four haploid daughter cell. Two diploid daughter cell. I should say two diploid daughter cell. Here. Two, you add diploid. Two diploid daughter cell. And okay, not identical to the parent cell, but this one is identical to the parent cell, okay? What is the application? What we have learned with seven an hour to learn about mitosis and meiosis, what's the application? The application is spermatogenesis and oogenesis. If you remember my reproductive lecture, genesis means creation, okay? creation sperm is the creation of sperm creation of eggs oo means oo the scientific term for the eggs is called oocyte the scientific term for sperm sperm is a general term believe it or not scientific term of sperm is called spermatozoa So this is singular. If it is a plural, plural ends with plural does not have the uh, n at the end, just soa. Spermatozoa. So um, this picture we show it before in the reproductive system. Basically, a mature or adult uh, human being will produce. Uh, sperm and eggs by meiosis and then using the sperm and egg we go through fertilization and then the zygote will be deployed again and then as the baby as the zygote develop develop meaning that when it undergoes a mitosis then the number of cell increases then it forms the a baby and then the baby continue to do a mitosis so that the baby can grow become an adult Let's take a brief look at the spermatogenesis. So spermatogenesis, well, of course, at the beginning we have the meiosis one. The primary spermatocyte is 2N diploid. After meiosis one, you have two secondary spermatocytes. They are haploid. And then they grow through meiosis two. And then spermatids, spermatids, they are the immature sperm. The immature sperm, spermatid, um, this step, maturation of spermatids, they occur in epididymis. If you still remember the reproductive epi, epi, oh, sorry. Nope. Maturation of spermatid into sperm occur in epididymis, and um, you have the mature sperm. It is also haploid, and you have four sperm. Well, um. Yeah, just a reminder, it takes approximately two months for a man to make sperms. What about oogenesis? So, um, you have the primary oocyte. 
which is 2n, then you go through meiosis 1, And then, um, oh, okay, this is not a complete oogenesis. This is not a complete, your textbook didn't show you a complete oogenesis. Um, okay. So, um, So meiosis 1, remember meiosis 1 will give you two daughter cell, right? So one daughter cell is the egg, the uh, oocyte. The second uh, daughter cell is called first polar body. That is at the end of meiosis 1. At the end of meiosis 1, you have this um, first polar body produced, okay? And then fertilization occur, what happened is that... Um, The second polar body, well, they make it, they didn't separate it. Second polar body is the, another cell. And then at the end, when you form zygote, at the end of it, when you have two N, then you should have a third polar body coming out. Hmm, the sequence is just a little bit wrong. Well, anyway, so fertilization of the um, egg will come up, will give you the last polar body. So in other words, you still have four daughter cells. Three of the daughter cells we call it polar body. And then the last daughter cell, it will become the zygote, the fertilized egg here. So that is oogenesis. That's the end of this lecture.